Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 177. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week is a man who's never worn a suit in his entire life. It's Chris Elliott. Citation needed. Citation needed. Let's figure out that Wikipedia. Uh, also joining me is a man wearing a Nintendo 64 shirt. Bring in re- yeah. Bringing back the retro mood in this woke world. It's Ian Gibson. You know? <laughs> You, you, I feel you like might, I got this, this guy shirt. likes video games. I feel like I got this shirt for like four dollars on sale. It was fantastic. Great find. That's great. Um, very happy for you, uh, folks. Uh, we're here to talk about video games. We're here to drink delicious liquids that are on our desk. We're here to hang out in yellow shirts. But more importantly, we have a little ch- different liquids as well. <laughs> we have a little chat section here. There's so many liquids. Oh, no <laughs> solids though. Um, or solidus um we're we got a <laughs> we, have, we got a chit chat section here uh i just i was reminded of this story today uh chris and i met at a job working for Terrible a trivia job. app uh years ago um and um we there were three <laughs> three of us boys and for some reason we decided one day in the middle of like june or july we're like oh Let's do an awards ceremony that for like. That's why I can't remember why we did it in the first place. I just place. remembered. I, I didn't have it, but it just came to me. We're gonna do an awards ceremony for our in-office stuff. We were all big fans of I think you should leave and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. we just want to do like goofy shit. Um, so we ordered plaques, which I don't, I don't, I don't think I got a plaque unless I, I like I don't. Did we only it. order one? And no, we, we ordered one plaque. We, we ordered um dipl- like diplomas or something. We ordered yeah. one plaque no, we, for the no, memorial we staircase <laughs> for a, for a employee who the was fired. Staircase. <laughs> and then our boss <laughs> yelled at us for buying it. <laughs> so we we it's gave true. it to Marcus, I think. But regardless, we were like, hey, let's dress up for the occasion. Let's put suits on for the award show. Uh, it'll be great. It'll be awesome. A week goes by or like two weeks or it was like a week or it was over a weekend know, or whatever man, anyways we come in i get in there marcus gets in there we're in there for a little bit like an hour or so chris shows up sweating in a full suit oh in the middle God. of the summer and goes i fucking knew it and he throws his bag down seeing marcus and i not wearing uh suits ourselves and it is the funniest prank I've ever played on someone by accident, because I fully intended to wear a suit. I was about to say, I was about to say, was this intentional or not? And no, I it. thought about texting them, but I was like, eh, they'll remember. Which I was my mistake. So bad, and it was so funny, but, like, I... If I had woken up this morning and said, oh, let's prank Chris by not wearing suits, I would have been like, ah, no, it's a little mean. Like, let's not do that. (laughs) But we just completely forgot. It was so mad. Um, It was was pretty funny. It was an absolutely incredible moment. And I was happy to be reminded of it today. Um, But, yeah. Tragically, uh, those suits have all died in a fiery car accident. And they've been laid off from (laughs) Embracer. Um, They were drinking uh, and driving. Yeah, they were drinking and driving. They actually they made bad games, so they deserve to get fired. It's it's how it works. So I uh, so we've been told. So we've been told. Um, that's the chit chat section. I didn't have anything, but we 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 rummaged oh, I mean, by I, in I, life. I have. I have oh yeah, I you forgot. Want. You're bullshit. You're on this. Yeah. Oh fuck! Sorry, I never have. to roll the red carpet out for the would you rather's. Uh, this is this so, so this one this one is uh, perfect because it's it's variable. You can answer this one at different ways, at different times. Um, how right now in this exact moment would you dispose of a body if you had to? So to set the scenario a bit further, a corpse appears behind you right now. Okay. And okay. There is implication on it that you are the one who killed them. You have never seen the person. Let's assume they're roughly your height and body weight. It doesn't particularly mm-hmm. matter. How do you dispose of the body to make yourself not uh, culpable or whatever? I mean, I live surrounded by retention ponds filled with gators. And just beyond <laughs> that, fucking Everglades. So uh, you just you just put it in your car. Go take it somewhere. It's true. Ian has the Florida advantage. We haven't talked about that yeah. before. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's usually advantage. the Florida you, disadvantage. But, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah. But you guys have the Jersey advantage, which is if you jumping in the hot side of the road and nobody gives a shit, right? They're just yeah. like, God, oh, another day in Jersey, you know? I, 
I was going to say, I just hand it to the trash guy. <laughs> he puts Every, it in the trash. Everyone, everyone on this it. call lives in a state that is corrupt as fuck because of the mob. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, I just... No, I think I would blame conservatives. I would not blame the mob for Florida. I would blame it's a type of mob. Miami. Actually, I don't even know if the mob's that big in Miami anymore. Uh, not not anymore, but like in the past, I'm saying. Like, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they got the ball rolling and the, the, the corruption just lingers. So yeah, only in Miami, because that was the only city worth living in back then in Florida. So what I would do, I would go dig up Jimmy Hoffa and put the body there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then no one would ever find it. That's that's a very good joke. Look, nobody can find him. Put him in the same spot. Put him in the same spot. <laughs> so I, I've, been, I've been thinking about my solution to this, and I think I have my favorite one, which is just leave it in the middle of the street outside of my house and then let the let the controversy come to me you know i haven't i haven't been at the center of anything in my life like no like no big <laughs> yeah. no big to do no big like like i haven't been questioned by the police that's not true i haven't been questioned by the police over something anything important um <laughs> come on let me have I, my moment <laughs> i have a really bad answer but it's also kind of a good answer mm-hmm. which is i'm imagining your scenario probably living in an apartment right what if you just what if you just ate it freeze the body and slowly eat it <laughs> over the course of like a year and then you just have to get rid of I the bones i don't want to do that i know but it's it is a valid is, solution yeah. and is it anyone looking for the body <laughs> i think they would eventually somebody has it's got to be somebody's body it's got to be you don't somebody's know who it is. body do they have um, any? Are they naked? Do they have identification nude. on them? Fully nude. Fully nude. No, no tattoos or anything like that. Oh, I haven't thought about that. Uh, sure, they they can have a tattoo. And the tattoo says, "My name is this, and I killed myself because of." Oh, I don't. I don't need it's tattoos. Like, it's so. like carved in like in their chest with a knife. Like Will Will Crosby did this. I don't eat tattoos. <laughs> um, yeah, he's one of he's one of any impurities in his body. I genuinely think if you cut a body in like three pieces, like that 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 that, that few or like that small of a number, and put it in like three different trash cans across the city, no one would ever fucking know. Yeah, oh, no, they would they would know. They find shit at landfills all the time. Have you been to uh? You been to a landfill? It's fun. Yes. I thought it's you were going to say, have I seen, have I like found any dead bodies? And I was like, no. Ian, what do you fucking think the answer to that is? Landfills are great because you'd be surprised how many strangers and employees of the landfill are just constantly looking out for good shit that they can pull out of the trash. Oh, yeah. I have done myself at landfills because you find good shit in there. We, there was a, in, the, in like the shitty little town I grew up in, there was actually like a pretty well organized landfill that had like, I wouldn't even call them bins, just like areas you could put shit that was like, yeah valuable but like throw you're throwing it away it was basically just like you yeah but yes. yeah exactly like, like you want to get yes. rid of a couch just put it here somebody will take it yeah the same thing um, yeah so like if we ever took any like you know bulk trash you're like oh let's go see what's in the fucking free zone yeah, yeah. ours actually ours became too popular and there were people who started being like vultures and like waiting mm. for people to drop it off and they would take it and then go sell it so they ended up having to shut it down completely because it was too good of like a swap shop we would always go after Christmas because everyone would throw their Christmas trees out. Um, and there would always be good shit because people, like, people got a new chair or whatever the fuck for Christmas. And they throw the old one. The old one out. But yeah. uh, people would also light the Christmas trees on fire for funsies. Oh, that's fun. like fun. Some, uh, one time somebody somebody did it while they were at the uh, dump and we got, we got trash fire. It was like the Simpsons oh bit. God. Hell yeah. We had, um, we had, so you could take your bulk trash and I think you had to pay... I want to say you had to pay like $20 per thousand pounds of trash you could go. So sometimes we'd be like, hey, let's clean out the garage. We would just throw a bunch of shit in the back of the pickup truck and then take it to the dump. But what you would do is you would you would back up. They had like four or five giant dumpster bins and they were on a level lower. So you would back up to it and then just throw stuff out of the truck into the dumpster bin. But the reason why I bring that up is they always had two or three people to employ two or three employees. there, like helping you and making sure everything's going okay and swapping the bins out. And they had over the years built themselves 
like a little palatial shed like it had walls and a roof and it had a TV trash kingdom and it had recliners and it was just completely from shit they had pulled out of the bins over the years and it was so cool to see them build that up over the years and it was like better and better every time you saw it playing it was Fallout awesome. 4 before todd howard got his grubby little mitts on it <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah it was amazing i miss so here in here in florida unfortunately in my county they're like oh if you need to throw something away we come by your house every other wednesday and i'm like yeah but i I want to go to the dump and they're like, no, no, we don't have public dumps. Just put it on your curb. And I'm like, but I miss the dump. I want to go to the dump. It's fun at the dump, but we just can't do that down here. Literal yeah. trash man, Ian Gibson. I grew up, we didn't grow up with any trash service. So it was always go to the dump and throw the trash away yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. And plus on Cape Cod, all the dumpsters you were throwing trash into were, um, they weren't train cars, but they were giant containers that went onto train cars. Um, yeah, because yeah, yeah. they shipped all the garbage off of Cape to dump it somewhere else. Um, which is actually why you technically didn't need to recycle Jersey. because they combined the recycling plant and the garbage plant and then sorted it at the destination. So yeah. they, they didn't yeah. start That there. must but, cost a fucking fortune. I know. Uh, but they also had a swap <laughs> shop and I, I've gotten a lot of great things from there. I still have some like random mugs and like board games and books and stuff that I got from there. But the worst was I got there and on the like swap shop desk uh, where like the guy was sitting behind the booth like just watching people was a giant bag of like super nintendo and nes games and the wow. fucking guy this old ancient man who's probably been dead for 50 years now uh, or i guess 28 years i was gonna say you haven't uh, been alive the amount i'm remember. alive um was like oh these are for my grandson or something and like like put them behind the desk and i was like oh, oh. Well, fuck you dude um so <laughs> anyways i murdered him and i had to hide his body which was easy because it just put it in back into the trash. Yeah, that uh, was pretty great. And Cosmic Ballet goes on. Yeah, as always. Uh, See, if I wasn't here, you'd already be talking about video games and like, who fucking cares? Yeah, that would be awful. Do you have any? Do you have any other questions? Burning questions? I don't think I have any good ones that we haven't already done recently. I mean, you've never had a good one, so might as well keep going. How dare you? <laughs> um, I, I asked the car watch one, right? Uh, I, you know, I don't pay attention, so ask it again. <laughs> okay. Imagine you work at a car wash. You do not manually wash the cars. You're more there in the case of anything goes wrong, maintenance, whatever. Yeah. How many times in a row can a car oh, go yes. through the wash yeah, you before this you last call time. the police? Yep. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, the answer is I don't care until we're closed, and then I get upset. And then it's, and then it's plus one. Well, what, what color is their skin? So that's the thing. Do they have any tattoos? <laughs> Blacked out tinted windows, all black SUV. If you knock or anything, no response. If you try to get in front of them, they just lay on the fucking horn and rev the engine at you. Oh, that's like a weird. That's like a. Oh, that's like a scary Steam Stephen game. King, <laughs> Stephen King's like, fuck, why didn't I think of this? I could have shit it out in a weekend and made the million dollars. <laughs> Steven Spielberg, like, why did we shoot Duel all over the place? We could have just done it in a car wash. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bert. <laughs> From the minds that brought you Duel Wash. <laughs> the sequel, Duel Wash. I uh, can't wait for that one. Uh, okay, those are great. Thanks for really spicing up the chit chat section. That was enjoyable and fun, and I loved it. Moving on then to the game section. Um, Ian, you've been playing one game all week, and, and I, I constantly... demand you read it the way you wrote it in the doc. <laughs> Uh, the way it was written in the doc. Um, you've been playing this all week. Uh, I have misread it twice, thinking you somehow got your hands on a modern video game. Uh, what have you been playing? Uh, well, somebody wrote Sid Meier's Civil Castration 6. <laughs> what do you mean, funny. somebody? I didn't write it. I wrote oh, it. Oh, Will? Will did. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going through. Um, it was almost civil circumcision, but I couldn't remember how to spell circumcision, <laughs> so I wrote castration <laughs> instead. Um, yeah, I, I haven't been playing this all week. I've been playing this since this morning. So, look, let's go back in time, which is we're almost done with Satisfactory, but you and your lazy fuck of a brother aren't playing it anymore. Hey, we but played I also, last night. You fell asleep. You fell asleep. <laughs> 
I didn't fall asleep. I went to bed. You guys played for an hour last night and I've played like 10 hours in the past week. And we're at the point where I can't, I, I am just barely nice enough that I'm not going to finish the game without you guys, which means I can't play the game anymore because I'm really only going to play when you guys are there. Uh, because we're like, I don't know, maybe like two hours away from finishing it. Um, but I was like, I like satisfactory. I like that type of game right now because you know, I need to just decompress, which means just some bullshit game that I can put hours and hours into and listen to a podcast. Right. Mm -hmm. And seeing Civilization seven get announced, I was like, fuck, I should play more Civ six. What's y'all's experience slash feelings on Civilization six? Three, four, revolution, five, six. That's ones I played. Was that in the order of them? (laughs) Correct. Um, Three and four, good. Rev was fine. Five eventually got good, but was bad at launch. And six, I never really t- took too much of a kind to. Um, I like Civ. The problem is that I require friends who are, have a lot of time to play uh, Civ if I want to play it with like with people. Um, and that's a hard thing to come by when you're thirty. <laughs> oh, we should I, do a big. I Civ feel like game. Civ is a. I would done... be down to do a six-hour Civ stream. See, I've done that a couple times, and it's. It's never as much fun as you want it to be. Civ is one of those games where, where like, the single player is infinitely better than the multiplayer. As much as you want the opposite to be true, that type of game, you just need to sit down and burn through at your own pace with AI that goes immediately. Because even with the simultaneous turns, there's always one or two fuckers in your group where you're just like, all right, fuck it. Take your turn already. Come on. Come on. Counterpoint. We all, everyone picks a country ahead of time. We all wear costumes. And for we all hours. drink heavily during it for just six hours for six hours and turns are on a timer. Yeah. Or <laughs> if turns aren't on a timer, there's a penalty for uh, going past a certain amount of time. <laughs> you have to put on an additional piece of your costume. Yeah. I, I will only do that if there's a caveat, which is we play on a giant USA map and we each pick an American historical figure. Trump, can we Clinton, do that? Lincoln, yeah, there are mods out there that add those as. Oh. Like you said, you said I like I. You said a historical American <laughs> figure and started with Trump and Hillary Clinton. Yeah, of all well, do you the American history the, here's people. The thing. Oh, it could be a last election time, theme. The last time I played Civ Six was two thousand yes. Super Tuesday night. I remember. And I played a game on the usa map as trump and i streamed for like four or five hours while the super tuesday results were coming in and i think i had a whole overlay for it and everything i would do that i'd be down to that so he plays as libertarian party uh i'll I'll play as like the green party or some shit uh somebody else could play as the republicans willie can be the democrats whatever be obama i feel like this is gonna fall apart like two hours into the stream but anyways yeah so that's fine it's longer than most subpixel streams got him yeah, there's a there's a reason for that. Uh, <laughs> um, jobs. Well, the thing about <laughs> the thing about Civ Six is that like I feel like we all kind of had the same experience, which is we got excited for Civ Six. It came out. We played one or two games, and then we were like, uh, <laughs> yeah. And then we either went, went back to Civ Five, or we just never played Civ. Did you play then. Human Humankind? Is that what's called the the not Civ? No, I didn't. But. I don't know that I want to. I keep looking at it, but I don't know that I want to. I haven't touched but it. But I, I I'm here to say, longingly, Civ games have a weird history where essentially I, this isn't true for all of them, but at least in my experience, and I think for a lot of people's experience, it is. Civ is not a game you play at launch. If you play it at launch, you're disappointed because the previous game has a shitload more DLC and mods and and polish to it. So Civ is a game where you pick it up several years after it came out and then you play it obsessively and you love it. But then the next one comes out and you ignore it for a couple of years until it hits the right period. Yeah. And I, I don't, I don't know that I can say this with any sort of authority or, or knowledge behind it, but playing Civ six today, which I played for like five hours today, like a little bit before work and a lot after work, it feels like Civ six is in its right period because it's had multiple major expansions, had a shitload of leaders. They've made a lot of changes in Civ six and in the lifespan of Civ six compared to Civ six at launch. And it feels like if if you're excited for Civ seven, I would say just go play some Civ six like I'm doing. There's a lot of a lot of new weird stuff. They added um, they added diplomacy with barbarians. 
Are you guys aware of this that what? they added? So you they can like, deserve that. Can you like influence them to fuck up other people instead of you? Yeah, there's basically three options, right? So there's I'm going to bribe you with gold so that you don't attack my cities for 20 turns. I'm going to give you money and you're going to immediately give me one of your units. Or I'm going to uh, bribe you to go attack somebody else. Um, and then I think in my map, it, this isn't working out, but I think there's a way where if you keep doing some of those options, you civilize the barbarians enough that they like become a city state, basically. Um, and then and then they're civilized and now they're just yeah. another city state. And that's like cool. that's just a, like a cool little change because I'm yeah. I fucking hate barbarians. I'm, I'm doing a culture <laughs> victory run. So like I'm not trying to do any military at all. And every time they come after me, I just give them money and I'm like, here's 300 gold. Leave me alone for 20 turns. And it's fucking great. Uh, and like they just add a lot of cool little stuff like that. So I, I would say, honestly, I'm at the point where I don't know that I want to play Civ 7 at launch because I think it's going to be the same cycle all over again. It's going to feel underwhelming. But I'm super happy to play Civ 6 right now. Uh, I was just going to add that I I barely played Civ 6. So I think it's been long enough that when I play Civ 7, I won't have any frame of reference for a civilization game. Yeah, so I think that'll be OK. That's the other thing. Yeah. But I think you're right if you're someone who, like when I, I played a bunch of five before six and then I was turned yeah. off of six. So I think I think if you're definitely playing the previous game, you're going to be turned off by the new game. Um, yeah, I realize when they announce sequels to things, you should do the opposite and not play any of those games uh, and wait for that game to come out. Yeah, uh, you should try to treat it like it's new. Yeah. Yeah, because I fall in that pit all the time. Speaking of, that's funny. That's actually relevant on here, which is the game on here. I've written uh, new rule three uh, is I've come up with a rule for myself that I am now establishing in my life, uh, mostly for video games, which is when I finish a video game as much as I would like to a, a longer video game, like a full video game play. Um, as much as I might want to play the next game in the series or a game adjacent to it or something like that, I should pivot and play a completely different type of video game because that always happens uh -huh. to me. I barely, it, it almost happened with Assassin's Creed 1 to Assassin's Creed 2. I did finish Assassin's mm -hmm. Creed 2, but it always happens with like, I played Splinter Cell 1 and then I played about an hour of Pandora tomorrow and then I haven't touched a Splinter game since. Yep. Like I do that with everything. So when I beat Assassin's Creed 2, I'm like, I really want to play Brotherhood and Revelations. I am not playing those next uh, at all. Uh, so don't even try it. So, you should do what I do and play every single Assassin's Creed game in one year back to back to back and then yeah. uh, decide the franchise isn't that good. Nope, not going to do it. I did, however, beat Assassin's Creed 2. Um, that ending is still pretty oh, great. Uh, that game is still fantastic. I did most of the stuff in the game. It um, The Ezio collection, um, so the original mm -hmm. game goes from s memory sequence 11 and you skip 12 and 13, which were DLC. And then you go to memory sequence 14 is the end of the game. Um, they added in 12 and 13 to the Ezio collection because it's just included. And boy, that section sucks, but um, I don't know why they included it. It's terrible. I know. I mean, I know why they included it because it's DLC for the game, but it is awful. And I wish I could have just I wonder if I could have skipped just to 14. I, I played those recently. What what missions are in those? In They're those like two sequences. You go back to uh, Florence and it's being taken oh, over by the other guy. God. You have to kill yes. all those lieutenants, oh, and then uh, and it just sucks and it's bad. Oh, that and was DLC. Yeah, they're both DLC. That's that one, why it's so bad. And the the chapter that like leads up to him stealing the apple and everything is is DLC. Mm -hmm. um, so it's bad and not good. The final Vatican is cool uh, from a historical perspective. It's awful from a game design perspective. It's yeah. not an open map. They like shove you through this linear section that sucks. Uh, but that he ending a fight to a fat seventy-year-old. Yeah, yeah, you fight a Spanish man, the Pope. Uh, but that ending's pretty good, uh, and it nails it pretty hard. Uh, and like it goes to credits, and then it cuts back, and you're like fighting again as Desmond. It's really good. Um, so I, I'm excited for Brotherhood and Revelations. I've never touched those games ever. Um, I've never played three. Um, the oh, next really? one I had played was Black Oh, you're Flag. in for a fucking treat. So I, I, I'm excited. Especially my friend... Um, actually, I didn't write this down. I played some Dark and Darker with friends this week. And uh, my friend Josh, who uh, has been on streams before, and he was in the Waterdeep uh, 
D and D show that we had, uh, he was saying that Revela he thinks Revelations and Brotherhood are his top two favorite Assassin's Creed games. So I was like, oh, Correct, I, I'm genuinely excited Revelations gets like shoved down because of people's memories. But as someone that played through it last year, it's exceptional and better than two. Oh, I'm I'm so I'm really two looking forward to it. Was just like groundbreaking for the time. I have cut myself off from Assassin's Creed. I said, no, Eves, stop calling me. Stop texting me. I will not play your video games, sir. Um, so I I've cut myself hope off. you make it to play all the way to play Assassin's Creed 3, because I need another person to play that in the year of our Lord 2020 something. So I can complain about how <laughs> that is, I think, one of the worst video games ever made. And I cannot believe it was released. I can't wait for our stream series where I play through Assassin's Creed 3. <laughs> I happily if i don't have to touch it if i don't have to touch the mechanics i'll watch it <laughs> thank god jeez chris is a big watcher um so yeah. i um Usually i nude. streamed on monday some xcom the end of xcom the final mission uh i failed that mission twice i'm on iron man mode and they still restart that mission if you lose they're like you want to restart um there is a point where you have to fight two sectopods and it's the worst mm -hmm. part of that entire game ever. And I beat I beat the sectopods the second time, made it all the way to the elder. I was about to kill, he had one. First of all, he uh, mind controlled my sniper, Jake Terrio. You might've heard of him uh, because uh, uh, John Matrix Commando had been killed by one of the sectopods. And wow. um, he mind controlled him, so I couldn't just snipe the motherfucker. So I got the guy's health all the way down to one pip, and I lost my entire team. And so I'm genuinely pissed off. Uh, and uh, I will be streaming it again probably on Monday. And Is I'm going to try to beat it again. The same Iron Man campaign that Ian and I were in and both died horribly. Yeah, you died horribly. Vic. Didn't uh, I get friendly fired? Yes. Um, yeah, I think sorry. you, uh, someone, I've never had a rocket misfire. It's always a 90% chance, and one misfired and killed you. Uh, I'm pretty Wait, sure. Wait, what is a, what do you mean a misfire? Like, what is, what is that mechanic? The rock, the, the, you know, when you miss a shot in XCOM, it like, it still hits whatever it's aimed at. So you can accidentally yeah. blow up all. So the rocket launcher also does that. It just hit earlier. Uh, oh, okay. It just hits someone gotcha. in the back rather than going past them. Um, and I could could me. not believe it. Um, uh, Vic, your, uh, your wife was my star pupil for a really long time until I got fucked on an exalt map. Um, it gave me horrible, horrible spawns there. Um, and then uh, my my current team, I believe, is Jake Terrio, John Matrix of Commando fame. Um, oh God, there's I think Josephine. Uh, Napoleon, Empress Josephine, uh, Ka <laughs> Karen Prosby, as uh, was written at her eye doctor, because they got her, wrote her last name wrong. Uh, and there's there's two other people who I can't. Oh, oh, Chiwetel Ejiofor. Oh. My man, he's doing great. Uh, and there's someone else as well who I can't think of right now. But uh, they're a great team. The problem is I I I lost my I lost Kyle, who was my expert um, rocket launcher heavy. So I like have a lower down heavy that I'm I didn't expert, bring with apparently. me. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, so anyways, I'm going to try it again. I'm just so pissed off. It's, it's, I, and, and I only went for the mission because it just, it stops everything and you just get to go after the mission. But yeah, uh, yeah we'll see. Do you, this is my opinion on, on XCOM 1 and 2. B brilliantly great crafted games with fucking dog shit, uh, like difficulty progression. Yeah. 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 There are some missions that just like, I, I basically anything bad that happens in the game is down to RNG. Like I've had missions yeah. go flawlessly, and I'll I could have the same missions with the same statistics go horribly. Like, like that exalt one I lost. They just spawned in like 360, and the room it was one of those defend the encoder rooms, and they just blew up all the walls to it. So like I couldn't, I I was getting shot from everywhere. It was it was fucking annoying but yeah it's um it's bullshit i did not hit her um yeah. moving on uh that was a room reference by the way uh oh hi I'm mark oh, okay How's your sex I, was sure I wasn't making a joke about not no i know. not hitting i hit women is what i want to get across <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> jesus are you, beta, are you doing beta breakers this year no i'm not doing that shit <laughs> 
Um, I am, however, on a new drug that I have I have downloaded and injected directly into my veins. You might have heard of it. It's called Dota. I believe it stands oh, for no. um, defense. What, are you getting it in mobile in 2024? Uh, I believe it's called uh, <laughs> uh, no Dota. No fucking way. Um, are you really? Uh, but I'm playing the classic version of Dota, which I believe is called Warcraft 3. Uh, and oh, okay. War fuck up. <laughs> Warcraft 3. Oh. Uh, I downloaded... Uh, I was going to purchase the reforged version um, from Blizzard because it was on sale. And then I was, I like looked up Google review or I Googled reviews and it was like, Hey, if you never played them, play reforged, it's fine. But if not, you can play the classic version. Here's how to get the classic version, blah, blah, blah. So I went to the wonderful archive.org, downloaded the uh, CD image of the original uh, game, installed that on my computer, installed the patch that I and blizzard uh, supports their older games. I mean, at least until they move them on to a remaster, but Blizzard had patched it all the way up to work on Windows 10, uh, so I fired it up. Uh, I had to do one registry key thing to fix the uh, stats, or the stats, the um, videos to play properly. Uh, mm -hmm. But besides from that, I played through the prologue. I'm, I played like five or six missions of the main campaign, Reigns of, Reign of Chaos, uh, and that game's fucking great. Uh, it's got a good, uh, uh, it's, it's got had a good variety of missions so far. I am Arthas. Uh, who I believe becomes a frozen boy in World of Warcraft. Uh, but right now I'm a prince, and there's this prophet flying around telling everyone to go to Kalimdor. And I'm like, I remember that from uh, uh, World of Warcraft. Skyrim. And, and it's just kind of really neat to get all this lore like right up front and stuff like... I never, ever, ever paid attention to Warcraft lore because it's usually pretty stupid, but they're like saying things I remember skipping. So I'm like, oh, that's really neat. Or like, oh, that's really cool. Um, and so, and I, there's so much in this game that is in World of Warcraft, like uh, like spell images. And no like, shit. And, no, but I just, you know, no, I never that, played it. Like, I, it's crazy. I didn't realize the, like you're talking about the assets and the icons. Yeah, like assets, uh, like different, um, I mean, characters, obviously, but, like, assets, icons, like, there's music, the music that plays on the maps I've been playing sounds, it sounds like an off, uh, or a first draft of the Iron Forge theme uh, when you're uh -huh. there. Probably, probably the same team. Presumably. Oh, yeah, and so it's just really like good. Um, I think it's the same dwarf actor as well. <laughs> Oh, does that's all great. the voices so it's really fun uh it, it also teaches you the game really well as you're playing i've i've started learning actual hotkeys for things uh to like Ooh. get off like uh skills and everything uh it, it's great i um was like oh, i should 3d print i wonder if anyone offers the models from this game and there's a couple people on uh the internet that have extracted the 3d models from it and you can print them out and I was like, oh, what if I printed out like a human base and like set it all up with the guys and everything? Um, so yeah, I'm playing Warcraft 3, not Reforged. I'm playing the classic version. Uh, and that was my that was my pivot. I said, I need to play a game that is absolutely different from Assassin's Creed 2. Um, and I said, what if I played the good Dota? Uh, or the good, um, yeah, Do I, I got that lineage, right? Dota's based off of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah, you're okay. correct, yeah. Yeah, it's sure. Warcraft 3. Mod. I couldn't remember if uh, League of Legends was first or not, but I'm pretty sure nah. the first Dota was oh, first. Oh, fuck so. off. How fucking dare you? No, I did. Dota. I'm not. Oh, what? Fuck what? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna die on the hill of Dota versus League in 2024? Like, it's, like, it's not, it's not Dota fire. versus League. It'd be like if you said, I can't remember what came first. Was it PUBG or Fortnite? And it's like, well, one of them ripped the fuck off the other one. So, <laughs> PUBG was of course, I'm going to get that. upset. You yeah, know? but I, I'm not, I wasn't PUBG in that was space. I wasn't there, there's a pretty big there's a pretty big gap though between dota and league of legends like years wise yeah 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 i mean but like yeah i guess I, like no you're that is a fair comparison i was gonna say comparison wise the league's more popular but i was gonna like, fortnite is more popular yeah, you're right okay yeah you made you, your argument stands yeah yeah i don't care about the games <laughs> i just care about like you Did don't talk about the, the 500 dollars league of legends skin on this the fucking podcast no, fuck off. Next, they, next topic. Five hundred dollars League of Legends skins. It's actually seven hundred dollars more than that. How good what? is it? Who though? cares? It's a bad it's game. It's a, it's a virtual skin, Will. <laughs> that made him really angry. Yeah, you're gonna Does pay it for it. Do my anyways. taxes and honk my dick for me? 
I, I don't understand getting that upset about it being a five hundred dollars skin when there's there's worse things like all of Star Citizen oh. charging tens of thousands of dollars for Ian, ships. Ian, he, bought, he bought two. That's why he's so upset. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that Star Citizen. First of all, you and I both have an agreement of hating that. Um, it, it's more niche. League of Legends is the most popular game in the world. Again, despite my reservations about it. <laughs> is it though? It's not real. Yeah. This game was Roblox. I thought it was Roblox. No, according to monthly like active individual players, it's it's a uh, league. But what is review. what is Google AI say? If you Google, it should it. be this sh Google AI. Google, Google AI says it's fucking like Assassin's Creed Three. Like <laughs> it's like it's bad. This should be Sorry. a mini game game show question though, which is guess the most popular games in the world. I mean, it changes like every month. So yeah, it's like a pretty good one. It's I mean, it's you have a good if you have a good chance if you guess Fortnite, GTA 6, Roblox, Among Us and Minecraft, yeah. Minecraft, well, but, but Among Us, that show Among monthly would be too much. I mean, Among Us is low. I think Minecraft's way down now. PUBG, PUBG is still up there because of China and the and mobile PUBG is huge. Yeah. And yeah. Mobile, and mobile. Yeah. yeah. Those mobile gamers, but it's also that's also why League is so big because uh, League is on mobile in uh, Korea and China. Yeah, and, and here but the, too, but nobody plays it. But the answer is uh, Candy Crush. There's a lot of moms out there. I've never, yeah. literally, never met a mom. I, but like, I, I think I think the mobile space is too diverse now. Like, it's not it's not just out Candy the room, Crush out anymore. the door. <laughs> yeah, I was extracted actually. Will Will was born in a separate room. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> anymore, but he was into a different room. Yeah, they launched them right down the hallway. I was raised by <laughs> they were curling to see how far they could get them. <laughs> I, I'm a slick, I'm a oh slick baby. <laughs> oh my god! I was um, just gonna fucking flip that. <laughs> Anyways, those are the games I've been playing. Go play Warcraft Three. It's free technically, so I haven't played it in a long time. But I remember it being good. <laughs> you can enjoy it as well. It has a. I was like, oh, this is great. And then I, I was like, I wonder why this lasted so long. Like, so many people played it all the time. And then I was foolishly, I realized I had a custom game stuff and online. Yeah. And I was like, oh, and they also that's stopped why. making them after that one. Yeah, it's it's good. And I was going to start with two. And I was like, no, nah, let me try three. I also bought this. There's a StarCraft one remaster. And it oh, was like, it was baby. like, it was seven dollars on on the blizzard store and i was like ah you know seven dollars is enough for that I'll, I'll i'll just download that uh because I, I it all started with me being like what if i played starcraft 2 again um mm -hmm. and then i was like i really like i i don't want to get like crazy so uh, you know i said starcraft 1 and then i said warcraft 3 anyways that's what i've been playing chris <laughs> has been playing a game that i it might be my game of the year um, i think it's currently my game of the year It'd probably change. Um, it's currently a game. Let's here. see if Chris is as hardcore as I am. Uh, but although they have updated it since I played it. But anyways, Chris. Will Will Crosby recommended a game on the and on this very program uh, in the wish list spotlight uh, called Crow Country. It's a Resident Evil. It's whatever. It's a PS One fake style uh, a survival horror game, uh, and it's fucking great. Um, it's tone and thematics and music and visual styling are are awesome. I think it tells a not like super innovative, but very cool and fun and interesting story. Um, I, I think like, yeah, I think the story is predictable sometimes, but I think it's also like, it's just it's just good. It very much captures a feeling of, of, of nostalgia, um, even for an era of games that like I was playing, but like not that much of. Um, and yeah, it's it's great. Uh, it's, what do you call it? Um, like not top down, but like isometric ish camera angle. Um, yeah. Shut the fuck up. Uh, you play as a little uh, lady um, named uh, what the fuck is Mara? Mara? Mara yeah. Yeah. Um, and you go around a spooky abandoned theme park trying to figure out uh, who who done it. It's a big crime situ situation. Um, I don't want to spoil anything story wise because story is very cool. Uh, game is very spooky. There are plenty of times where I would walk into a room and go, oh, no, 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 no. And walk back out because yep. there was bad things in there. Um, I streamed the whole box. thing in. <laughs> Oh fuck that box, dude! Nope. Um, I stream. I streamed the whole thing in. I think two streamers might have been three. Um, loved it. Uh, ten out of ten. Currently, I think currently my currently my game of the year at this moment. Um, because not a lot's come out. Let's be honest here. Um, Did you get what range you get? DLC. Uh, A, and then I went back for the S. Yes, um, good. I, I honestly I got the S too. 
I feel like going back fast might have been a waste of time, but it took also took me like an hour. So did like... you get all the birds though? Oh, the crystal birds. Crystal birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. used a guide though because I was like, "Fuck that shit." I I so I was gonna use a guide. I I used a guide for one puzzle because I like misunderstood what it was saying. But the birds, you can find the that treasure map you find or whatever tells you what rooms they're in. So you can at least like look for them in all those rooms. I the only what. only thing the only thing in the main game I had to use a guide for was the train puzzle because I solved it and then couldn't figure out how the fuck to actually like submit my answer. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think I remember that being weird. But yeah, that game's fantastic. Also, for uh, scaredy cats in the room, uh, you can play it without monsters on. Uh, you can turn off. Oh, that's good. All Which the is actually stuff. interesting. I I don't say I think the game would probably work really well as just like a spooky walking sim. Yeah, it's got maybe, cool puzzles. Maybe I will play it. Yeah, I highly recommend it, Ian. The and you can get to the ending pretty quick. I mean, I think my run with for S rank, it's somewhere in the Discord, but it was pretty short. It had to be like an hour and a half or something like that. Yeah, uh, if if you that. know what you're doing, you can do S rank super fast. Um, yeah. like and, and by know what you're doing, I mean you played it once. Um, mm -hmm. and then like I think like playing it, getting an A, and like you know, doing pretty much all the secrets, and then kind of being whatever, whatever with it, it was like four four and a half hours. Yeah, oh, that's good. Bad. That's good. But uh, that's all short they added some more stuff to it. I think there's a hard mode now. Uh, I don't uh, know I if there's play, more I, secret I, stuff, but I haven't booted it. But I, I was thinking of revisiting it at the end of the year, just so it's not as fresh in my mind. When I and the hard mode is those. also there because honestly, the game is pretty easy. Like the monsters die pretty quick to most gun. Yeah, that crow grenade launcher is pretty great though. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's so there. good. Just it demol it killed the end boss in like two. Two seconds. I used it to re-kill the end boss because I fucked up and didn't read the note. I also did that. Uh, I fucked up and didn't read the note. Uh, so, uh, fun fact, Ian, when you get to the end of that game, make sure you read the note before the game ends because you. I kind of wish to. I didn't, honestly. Uh, Will do. You know, no, I, I know. It I'm not going to say end. anything about the ending, but it was pretty cool. I, I genuinely cool. really liked it. I did so. figure it out, but it was so cool. Yeah, you know, I didn't. It took me completely by surprise. Uh, so. Um, I don't remember why you'll figure it out, out right away. Watch my stream. So, uh, yeah. Uh, what else you playing? How am I talk about Todd Howard's Wild Ride? Hell so, yeah! This has been a long time coming. <sighs> Fallout show came out. I started watching the Fallout show. I went. I could play some Fallout. Uh, reinstalled Fallout Three. Went. Yeah, but I also want to play New Vegas. So how do I do both? Turns out you can. It's called Tale of Two Wastelands. It's a big mod pack. It combines both of them in the Fallout New Vegas engine, but they're the same engine, but it's like the packet is Fallout New Vegas. Uh, and also you can do a bunch of like, there's a bunch of like uh, quality of life and cosmetic mods make it crash last blah, 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 make it a little prettier or something like that. So it looks like Fallout 3. Don't worry about it. Um, I was playing that, having a grand old time. You go through, you you do all the all the Fallout 3, all you, you kill everyone, you're stronger than Christ, you go to New Vegas, you have a grand old time, you blow all your money and, and, and hang out with Benny and, and the gang. Um, mm -hmm. how, does that, how does that connect? Like, like, can you bounce between the two of them, or is it you still got to do Fallout 3 first and then go to New you, Vegas? You can, do, you can do either order. They recommend starting in 3 um, because they import it in such a way that the when you become like the the narrative constructed by the mod is that in that three year gap between the games you become the courier like you leave gotcha the capital wasteland go to the, new vegas somewhere along the way become a courier get shot in the head um but you also you get dialogue options that they, they patched in that reflect you being from the capital wasteland gotcha. oh that's cool just super cool great like extra step to make it a really good mod um super great mod highly recommend uh very fun to just you know uh go back and also like i don't know i just love blowing up caesar's legion it's just like they're just a but they're, they're just like so cartoonishly evil that i'm like fuck yeah let's just like, let's just beat him up it's awesome shut up yeah what do you um, mean and they're also like it's also like something about it is so funny to me like in a war with laser guns they're like we're gonna be a melee focused army <laughs> and it's like no bang you're dead idiot stupid moron <laughs> um, so had a great time and went you know I haven't tried modding the other uh, Todd Howardisms in a long time let's see what's going on there so for the pro I'm gonna guess like 10th time in my life I downloaded Skyrim I went and found a big mod collection oh uh, Nexus Mods now has mod collections which is what I've been doing all this through um, they're oh. incredible it's a one button and it does everything for you usually you gotta go through like you know pick some options but like 
for the most part, it's like, you know, it's a couple clicks and you're done. It's an incredible scenario to live through. Um, got the Constellations mod pack, which is the most popular one for all of Skyrim job. Um, downloaded it, made a character, did the first like five, ten levels. I am. I just don't get it. I there's nothing fun about Skyrim. I I feel like I'm fucking crazy because wait, 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 everyone it, loves this game. And I'm I have talking about it now. But what about <laughs> did you play it when it came out? Played it and beat it when it came out. Sided with um the Skyrim so you liked people. It, so you liked it when it came out. So that's what I was going to say. Uh, played it all the way through on release. Sided with the, the wind helm people. What the fuck are that guy named? The Nords? Stormcloaks. I didn't even finish it. Stormcloaks. Um, got to the end. They swerved me with, haha, we're actually racist. And I went, oh, fuck you. Um, and started playing it again and never completed it again. Played played, played Fallout New Vegas instead. Had a grand all time. Um, went back and played it like later as an, I feels like, you know, I was like 14 or when that came out. I don't know how old I was. Um, went back and played it as a slightly older person and went, isn't very fun. Um, and since yeah. then, that has been my continued experience. I just don't find anything fun in the game. I also think that as a as the a role playing as the the part of like role playing the RPG is incredibly weak. Like I yeah. can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't really like if I choose to be like a wizard, I don't get like wizard dialogue options. No, which you is, just have spells. That's it. What's the fucking point? Yeah, I I had almost <laughs> the exact same experience because I I got very excited when it came out. I played it for maybe 15, 20 hours when it came out. I got maybe a third of the way through the story and I was like, this is fucking empty, right? Like that whole main storyline and and like making choices and the role playing like you're talking about, like it wasn't there. It had some interesting systems, but I think yeah. a lot of the staying power was at the time. There were not a lot of games like that. There were not a lot of fantasy games. There were not a lot of walk into a room. You can pick up anything. You can put the cheese in your house and do this stuff and you can steal and at the time, it was very novel, right? And then I tried to play Skyrim again last year, and I had the exact same experience. I made it like 30 minutes in, and I was like, it is now very stale to walk into a room and have, oh, I can pick up everything? Not cool anymore. I need you to tell me what the valuable stuff is. I don't want to have to worry about fucking encumbrance and all this stuff. Yeah. It is like the perfect epitome of like a time and place game. It is a probably a 7 out of 10 video game that at that moment in time felt like a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10. And ever since then, everybody's been chasing that nostalgia high, but it, it just does not hold up. It just doesn't, it barely held up at the time and it just doesn't now. So totally Give me agree with you. dialogue options. God damn it. That reflect my character. It's all I want in any RPG. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, all right, I hate Skyrim. It's the worst it's a piece of shit game ever. I unsolved it for the millionth time. <clears throat> I'm sure I'll make the mistake again in two years. And then I went, you know what? I've never tried modding Fallout 4. Let's just pull the fucking bandaid off and see what's happening. Because I hate Fallout 4. It's I think it's game. got a gr got a great weapons like shooting system, got a decent weapon weapons and armor crafting system, and that's fucking it. Uh, yeah. The setup system yeah. is fine. It's like it's fine. It's cool that they added it. They cared too much about it. I think the story and the writing are fucking abysmal, and I hate that. I like that they tried to do something cool by giving you an established character that has a kid, but the whole game being about Sean sucks. Sean. <laughs> the, um, I don't even the, remember that. I, I will say this every time, and I think I said it to Drake, who agreed with me. The Institute does not fit in Fallout nope. at all. They're, no. they're way too hyper advanced. Teleporting is way the fuck too like, hyper advanced for Fallout. Uh, yeah, other than like Mothership Zeta funny alien stuff like teleportation like should not yeah, right, that's what I'm saying. like using it like that is different than like oh this hyper advanced society um, it also just like felt like it felt like the power armor i never really liked the power armor and it took me a while to realize that i didn't okay. like it because they give it to you way too early like i yes, feel like that the is thing about these problem. games is that you start as shit and you're trying to make your way towards the cooler weapons and the cooler gear. But if they give you a power armor at the start, even though it has limitations, it's like, what's the fucking point of trying to get better stuff now? Like, like they, you don't earn it at all. It's just fucking given to you. In the first, I, you, I did it in 17 minutes without having a, like even mods acquired. This is when I play, played it vanilla. In the first 17 minutes of that game, after you get out of the vault, not counting that, Walked into town, got to Cosworth. He sends you to go fucking find Preston Garvey. You get the power armor, you put it on, you kill a Deathclaw. 
and you are made the general of the Minutemen. You're made the leader of the main faction of the video game in the first 17 Fuck minutes off. of the game. That's disgusting. Yeah. Um, That's just anyway. It's just um, like like a complete, <laughs> complete disassociation with why people play these games. And it's to make their own story and to go from nothing to everything to be like, oh, 17 minutes in. Let's let's make them the head of their own fucking faction and give them the most powerful thing in the game. It's yeah. like, how could you be so fucking they stupid also, about what your players want? All charisma checks are now a percentage based on how high your charisma set is. No other variables like you Ugh. having. And 10 science doesn't mean you can affect a science problem better. Yeah, that game sucks. But uh, uh, there is a very huge mod pack called a, a story wealth. Uh, it is the biggest mod pack on for Fallout 4. Um, it, it, so here is the fundamental problem I have with modding games in general. Eventually, you find the gap between the mod and the source game where the qualities begin to fray apart and they become to differ. Um, yeah. Fall New Vegas, which I think is a great game. Very often, the mods will be of a lower quality than the source game. Sometimes, Tell Two Wastelands is an example a, exemption to this. They do a great job, and it's like pretty damn close. Um, but for the most part, I think you get a lot of problems. Skyrim, I had this huge problem with, where I think the mods are trying to take the game in one direction, and the game is trying to go this direction, and they're both shit, and they crash and burn in different directions, trying to do try, both trying to accomplish good things and both failing. <laughs> Fallout 4 is the first game I have ever played where the quality of the mods is so much higher than the base video <laughs> game that when you encounter the base video game, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa what's going on over here? Ah, um, <laughs> That's wild. Child. That's wild. It's fucking crazy. The, a Story Wealth has a bit too many horny mods for me. I recommend ignoring the depravity collection. In, in yeah, you can play one handed. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, but also I something there's some. A dissonance for me whenever I loot someone's armor and they're nude on the ground. I'm like, that's ah, just fucking sucks. Um, anyway, um, S Sim Settlements 2, which revises the uh, story about uh, it makes it all around basically building up settlements, rebuilding the Commonwealth, removes the, the main story and makes that like a substitute main story um, that eventually interacts with the main story and makes it better. And also means that if you don't want to build your own set of settlements, you can like have them auto go and they'll like sim city up. It's great. Nice. Um, nice. And America rising, which adds the enclave to fallout four um, are the gr best mods I have ever seen in a video game. They're fucking incredible. And I, Re genuinely hope both the teams behind those got jobs making real video games after this. Not that mods aren't not real, a Bethesda, mods are really not a Bethesda though. No, Th no, be at wasted better there. at yeah. better places. Um, Obsidian. It so, some of, like some genuinely good writing, which is crazy. Voice acting that has no right being as good as it is, and like I just like they literally made Fallout Four from a game I fucking detest into this is a good mm -hmm. Fallout game, and then oh no the main quest is back and I have to look at it and like hear the terrible voice acting. Um, the main, the, by the way, voice protagonist, worst fucking decision they ever made in Vaughn. It's fucking terrible. Yeah, I hate it. So um, one reason see, I won't play that and, game. And it's also, it's not even the, like, it's not the voice actor's fault or even the writer's fault. You can't have them record 800 different intonations. So they're all going to sound the same. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, that was, that was my experience with Todd Howard's wild ride is that like, um, you can see as he progresses and gets more Todd um, that like what the games not should be, but what, like the narrative RPG ness is like stripped away so he can do Todd isms. Um, and uh, I'm so sad because I want a Starfield to be good. This is what it all comes down to is I'm still <laughs> mad about Starfield. There are now mods oh, for man. Starfield. So maybe it's time for hop in. And the and the well the creation club just came out. Um and I went to Twitter and saw that some of the people that made some of those mods I like to fall out for are now working on Starfield. And I'm like, ah, see you in five years, suckers. <laughs> Make my yeah. game for me. Shoo. Yeah. Um <laughs> I was just gonna say I would recommend <clears throat> to, uh if you haven't to play the best Bethesda game they ever made, which is uh Oblivion. Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Uh, oh no, I love Oblivion. You, the you most before. perfect and lovely boy. Um, I I'm still I still can just hop back into that game. I'm on my replay, and it, it's so. Good. I was I was about to say I don't know. I think I, I think I like like New Vegas more than Oblivion. I was like oh, not Bethesda. Uh yeah yeah exactly. Um yeah every time I try to play Skyrim since I beat it the first time, I inevitably go I should just play Oblivion, because uh, Oblivion's perfect and wonderful, and Skyrim is not it at all. 
Uh, Between and then Star Starfield and New Vegas. And now my brain is like, man, I hope Outer Worlds 2 is good. Like, just figure it out. Like, it's, something's there. Come on. It will yeah. be. Yeah. Avowed is going to be pretty good, too. I'm excited for that. <laughs> oh, right. Avowed's uh, coming out. The other Fallout uh, 3 New Vegas mod, which I, I think it's just New Vegas. I, I think I don't think it does the Tale 2 Wastelands, but it might, uh, is a mod I want to stream eventually when I do another playthrough. But it's every door in uh, New Vegas is leads to a different door. It randomizes That's the cool. doors at the beginning of the game. And then there's like the weird wasteland where it randomizes all the characters to be different mm -hmm. models and everything. Uh, and yeah. just does like weird shit. So. Actually, I, I saw a clip of that recently where a death claw was a dude uh, in like power armor, but with a sexy lady bottom. Like he was <laughs> top up power <laughs> armor. Bottom was like the like prostitute in Gamora. <laughs> but he was a death claw. Jeez. But so I like going like this. I want to pick like the the like Mr. House shutdown or kill Mr. House ending, which you can get to in like I, like I think like 20 minutes because you can just like hack into everything and just get into the room. Um, oh, I want to do that, but with that door mod, because first I have to figure out whatever door gets me to New Vegas. Then I, yeah. the front door to that casino won't lead me into the casino. And then <laughs> there's like three or four doors to get up to Mr. House. Yeah, so I just have to any, find them. Any, any door could just be the door into Mr. House's chamber. And then you exactly. just fucking whack it. So, so it's just like figuring that out and getting your way and like just i was almost thinking of just keeping up trying finding a program like a web program to like figure out <laughs> what leads where and just Jeez. like line oh, it all cool. up uh i think that'd be a fun like that'd chat, be a fun stream yeah fun stream game so is i'll the, set that up the, eventually is the door is the door connected both ways as in room a is room b and then b to a or is it Usually. you go a to b and then you go i think b, it's an option. and then it takes you to a c I can't remember. I think it might only be one way. Like the door. So, so both sides of the door will take you somewhere to different else. places. I think so. That's I need to double awesome. check. That's so um, fucking cool. But because but I just... also the door, like you you have to leave a door. It's the first thing you have to do to Vegas. You have to leave the doc doctor's house. So yeah. Yeah. you're required to get a random start, which is so fucking awesome. <laughs> So yeah. I like I really want to do that because it's it's so stupid and I think that's yeah that's like that's a game I know well enough uh, to randomize as well and it's not as much game knowledge so it's like yeah, yeah. I'll get that series together um, in uh, in, New, in New Vegas who who usually wins in your your games uh, I usually side with the NCR yeah and then uh, and send what the are the power options again to the entire there's, there's NCR Legion Mr House and then Free vegas like, yeah i i did free vegas because i didn't really i didn't trust any of the factions so i was just like let the people run it i did the army one at one point just to see it because it's cool when you go turn the army on the all the mm -hmm. army robots and everything yeah yeah the yes man yes man's yeah uh and then yeah i think i always kill benny i hate benny oh we got I always kill benny real piece of shit fuck fuck benny fuck, Ma fuck matthew bag. perry <laughs> Well, he's I, dead now. So. I forgot it was. I, I got to uh, New Vegas and he starts talking. I was like, ah, <laughs> ah right, friends, you are in this game, and you and I can have sex with you in this game. <laughs> Why does not Ross, the largest of the friends, simply eat the other we ones? Eat the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that bit. Um, that's video games. I'm glad we've been playing them. That's fun. Todd Howard. Okay. Um, it's been six years since that. Uh, El uh Elden Ring. Uh, Elder Scrolls Six flyover teaser six years it todd been six years oh no, it's probably been and, four. and don't worry six they're years. not working they're not working on the next fallout game yet is what he just said the other day six years literally the fuck are they working they got to be working on an elder scrolls then right yeah yeah that's next but like but i, I bet know, all the executives he spent a, he spent a decade on fucking starfield and like the best thing about it is the mods that make it say garfield yeah but the thing i like is that oh, he was just can you he was distracted I'm by sorry. starfield so they made elder scrolls good fuck i just remember you know you're totally right they have been working on starfield for at least 10 years and it still turned out like dog shit how the mm -hmm. fuck do you work on a how do you have a triple a studio work on a game that long and it still turns out that how do you claim to make rpgs uh, without dialogue trees <laughs> How dare you ring up two human in this house? <laughs> I'm sorry, the critically acclaimed two human? Oh wait, no, <laughs> not too good for you. <laughs> the critically I'm forgotten. Alpha human. protocol. Um, 
Let's move on to the news section where we talk about the video game news. Ian collects all the news from around the internet, spits on it, and then puts it in this document. <laughs> all right, so I had to censor uh, myself. <laughs> um, folks, it. let's talk about the Nintendo Direct, the finale of E3 2024, the June Nintendo Direct on June 18th. Let's just start with the opening thoughts. What did you guys think about it? Will, you want to go first? Uh, yeah, I thought it was it was good. They announced, um, what I, I mean, game of the, not E3, folks. Um, Dragon Quest 3, a remaster 2D HD, 3D oh, really? remaster 3D. Yeah. Um, I thought you were going to say Mario Party Jamboree. Uh, no, that was kind of a joke. <laughs> I am genuinely really excited they're remastering those first three because I've always thought about yeah. playing them. And I'm glad they're doing that, so I don't have to play the originals because they look... They don't look bad. I like the look of those NES games, but they play awful. So hopefully they've updated those systems. No, Mario Party Jamboree. Um, <laughs> I told Karen about it, and she said she was watching the trailer. And she was like, oh, yeah, it looks like Bar Super Mario Party. Wait, 20 people? And it just, like, yeah. lost her mind. So I'm really excited for it, especially they're also bringing back a couple maps from 1 and 2. That's going to make um, for some great A chaos. Yeah, yeah super mario party isn't bad it's just not as good as mario party superstars which were just re it was remastered one yeah. two and three and some gamecube super mario party has the like uh, it has the individual dice blocks and then you can mm. also play a version where you pick up allies and that system just is dog shit it just adds a layer of uh hey i can move 35 squares every turn and get the star and it's just like awful so i'm hoping there's there's a little bit they've like kind of paired that back in this version uh and there's more of a, a sort of a classical mario party mode to it but uh i'm always excited think, for more mario party like as long as they're not in a car the together fuck that's the worst one and they know that they, yeah they, they have said they're not doing yeah. that again um I, they're toying with the idea i think of doing like a more modular like a mario kart 8 style mario party Ooh. where it's just gonna be like we're just gonna give you like a couple more like boards and more mini games from the old games and just I, you, they just toss into rotation and honestly that's what they should do if it's a game a they bit. can update just do like superstars is begging for more maps like that's all I want is is because there's like you're not gonna get that. Four if, maps if you get that, it's Superstar. gonna be this game. No, I, I and that's what I'm excited. I'm hoping <clears throat> this game is the Mario Kart Eight where they can sell more maps and stuff. Like or create <laughs> my own maps. I don't care. Just let just uh, make Mario it more Party replayable. Mario Maker. Oh, thousand Ooh. turns, thousand turns, four spaces. You just go around yes. and around. <laughs> every every yes. space is a fight space. So it's all one v one mini games, and then you put on teams, and you have to be like, "Fuck yeah, fuck yeah, I hate you, son of a bitch!" And every space is a star space. <laughs> it's uh, it's all yeah. of them. <laughs> Everything is dual for stars. Or They're all Koopa star. Banks. They're all stars. They're all <laughs> Snippet Patrols. Uh, it's, it's all of them. Snippet Patrols. Yeah. So that comes out October seventeenth. <laughs> Super excited for that. Are you guys uh, Mario and Luigi fans? I'm excited for it. It's been a while. I've, I mean, I played the the GBA and the DS ones. Um, I, yeah. I, I also, I also think it is important for Nintendo to make other shit that isn't just main lines. Um, so stuff like this always makes me happy to see. Yeah, and I think it's been nine years since the last Mario and Luigi entry. So yeah. good to see them. Uh, you know, show some love to this series. Uh, Donkey art Kong Country banger. Returns. Great art style. Yeah, they're, they're always have good art style. Though. Sorry, just to, yeah. I just want to say that Donkey Kong, the Conky Dong. I somebody posted a very sad image, which is I believe the last four Donkey Kong Country re games, three of them were remakes or ports, which is wild. Yeah, Tropical uh, Freeze. So, there was Tropical Freeze, and then there was Tropical Freeze port, and then there was Donkey Kong Country, and now I think there's Donkey Kong Country Returns. So it's like, sh I mean, sure, uh, yeah, you can play remaster this, but. That series probably needs a new game by now, considering it, how well it looks well, good. It Chocolate needs. Uh, I, I can't believe I'm saying this. It needs a new equivalent to DK64. Like it yes. needs a new non Donkey Kong Country yeah. Donkey Kong game, um, which Keep went terribly racing. last time. Yeah. Uh, we've got the Dragon Quest ones. You know, you already talked about that. Will I? I am excited for those. I I love the HD 2D <laughs> concept. <laughs> that which is really cool. That really, system really cool. is beautiful. Uh, a big one here, Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom 
this one's fucking wild, right? Her job is wild. the tables. <laughs> <laughs> this one, okay, so the the premise of this is basically the art style is probably the closest to the Link's Awakening remaster. Yeah, it is. It's it's not HD 2D, but it's almost the world is the style of 2D, and a lot of the camera shots were Link's Awakening 2D style. So this is but, their new like, engine for making top-down Zeldas. I, I, they, it has a name. It's like the Deku. But a lot of it, like that. but a, if you notice, a lot of it was not top-down. Like they were moving the camera around a lot, which is cool. So that's why I'm kind of like, it's almost like an HD 2D well, where it's like, it's like the 2D aesthetic, but we're we're not constraining ourselves to that. We're we're moving the camera around a lot. Yeah, um, and the big thing is, from what I can tell, she does not have combat options. It is simply based around her ability to to uh, copy an object and then create copies of it anytime she wants to. So you can she's copy enemies, tables. Though. Yeah, no, you can. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can copy enemies. You can copy tables. You can copy water and create columns of water. This looks like Breath of the Wild style physics brought into 2D Zelda. Are you guys excited about this one? Yeah. Um, I'm very I'm excited. All for, I'm, I'm all for them finally making a game where you can fucking play as Zelda. I think they've been weirdly toying with it for way too long. Like, I mean, there was rumors of it back in Breath of the Wild that it was going to be DLC. There was rumors of it yeah. in Twilight Princess because um, the name, uh, which is stupid, but whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, Twilight. Okay. <laughs> hate you both so dearly. Um, <laughs> Ugly kids. Uh, can I just uh, say, can I just say, I felt kind of, I felt kind of vindicated on Extra Life when I got forced to play the game and the gameplay wasn't that bad, but we all just spent like two hours making fun of how fucking weird the people looked in that game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Monsters. It was terrible. Ter terrifying. Terrible. Me. But actually, I wish Nintendo would do more of that. I love what Nintendo makes sure. ugly because it's just so <laughs> yes. fun. It's a unique ugly. Yeah, fun, yeah, there's a, there's a charm to it. I don't know what it is. It's a, it's um, fugly, fun, ugly. Yeah, but I'm yeah. excited for it. I like them. I like them being risky with mainline franchises, like I just said with Mario, like trying different stuff. Um, good that Zelda finally gets a game, and good that they didn't just say fine. It's the same thing, but Zelda just plays like Link does. Yeah, like five hundred. Which would have been skin. fine, but like, yeah, this is better. Yeah, mods will fix it. Uh, yeah. They also Link closed cool. it out with a one more thing called Metroid Prime Four Beyond, folks. It still exists. Can't believe it. I I kind of can because this was too big for them to there's too many rumors and too big for them to just drop. But I can't believe how good it looks, considering it's this first time we've seen it since 2017 when it was announced. And uh, it looks pretty good. What, what do you guys think? I I think it looks good. I think the, tr the, the gameplay trailer was very good. It felt very like old school E3 tech demo to me. Yeah, it, it almost felt way. like. It almost felt like, hey, we're going to show you all the stuff that's in this game, but it wasn't new stuff. It was like, hey, we have this for Metroid Prime. We have this for Metroid Prime. We have this for Metroid Prime, which I could kind of understand. It felt like they were trying to show us we are actually making a Metroid Prime game and not some weird offshoot like we've been doing yeah. with the Metroid series. Well, then people on Twitter made a reasonable assumption to me. Um, they needed to do that because the majority of the Nintendo market share doesn't know what the fuck Metroid is, particularly Metroid Prime, because three yeah. came out 17 years ago. Yeah, that may be almost you legal. You can be 17 years oh old. My God. Oh, my God. Hey, the she's baby. almost a woman now. The baby? Metroid's almost a woman now. The baby. <laughs> when did the other M come out? I mean, it's some kind. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Other M came out 14 years ago, so that fucking flaming piece of shit. So if you're 15, the only Metroid you know about is that dog shit and Dread. Um, yeah, Dread was good, but it's not Prime style. It's not. Yeah, it's not the same. Which is why I genuinely thought they were going to just soft reboot Metroid and call us Metroid Prime. But they did the remaster. So why oh, do that if you've right. got the remaster? I about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, I uh, I I'm played excited. the remaster when that came out. The remaster's good. And it felt pretty yeah. good. It felt a little dated. And I was like, I can't wait for what they do with this it, in the new. I, I agree. With you. It it only felt dated because I I had to use a guide on a lot of that game. And I feel like they could not have fixed that without drastically altering the game or adding in like a really obnoxious hint system being like, hey, you should go here next. This is what you should do next. So mm. I it felt dated, but only because you weren't really sure where to go. And I understand them not 
deliberately fixing that in the remaster. Yeah, I thought the gameplay felt pretty dated too. Yeah, um, fuck you. Gameplay, gameplay felt great. Uh, so I watched this trailer and I, I really think it looks boring. I really think it didn't look good at all. It just looked maybe like just Metroid like Prime them. Remaster. Maybe, and I maybe said, you don't like Metroid Prime. That's basically the conclusion I came to. I don't think I like Metroid Prime because this looked like more of the same and not at all fun. Which is the weird I, lock I, on and the weird scanning of enemies and trying to shoot them. It's cool. It's so all cool. bad in that game. I think it'll puzzles. play better than it looked, is my main point. Listen, I'll buy it and yeah. I'll play it. But I should should I play two and three? No, I don't think you need to. I don't think it, you need to. It looked a lot the Beyond trailer looked a lot like the remaster, and the remaster felt very good. It felt very modern in how it controlled what you were doing, the lock on, the rolling around the puzzles. And so I, I was not expecting this to be something brand new. It's just more Metroid Prime. That's all it needs to be, and it that's what it looks like. When's other M2? Yeah. Oh, I think uh, I am really sad the star of the show wasn't here this time. Uh, Adam. which is the new uh professor, professor Layton game. Uh it not oh, show oh, anything. I want new world of steam so bad. Is that uh, this year or is that next year? Yeah, 2025. It, uh, yeah, it it's I just want it. Please. Well, I I need to take you to task. I need to kick you in the balls for a bit. You know why? Why do you have to kick me in the balls? Would you consider this a good direct? <laughs> Uh, you fucking felt, know where I'm going. I know. You fucking know where I'm going. Yeah, it felt like a direct where they said, "Hey, this is all the stuff that's coming out before the Switch 2." <laughs> no, no. See, here's Did what you happened, hear the rumors Chris. about this delayed again. Well, here's no. what here. Here's what happened. Last Nintendo Direct. Last Nintendo Direct, which I believe was towards the end of last year. Yeah. Nintendo Direct happened. It was it was an okay direct. It didn't really have any bangers in it. Will and David were on the podcast and they yeah. said, look, confirmation, confirmation that the Switch 2 is coming in 2024 because they had a bad direct. A bad direct means they are holding all their games. I, I never said Switch it was a 2. bad direct. And I was like, guys, not all the directs are bangers. Just because they didn't have a good direct isn't confirmation the console's coming. And they said, no, it is. It is. They're holding all their good stuff. Lo and behold, here we have a great direct with all sorts of great stuff and no fucking mention of the Switch 2. Ergo, your theory is bullshit. It's directs not. Directs will ebb and wane regardless it of hardware absolutely launches. Not. The last direct was when probably the Switch was still slated for 2024. So they were putting... I, the Switch and also, 2. It wasn't a... Yeah, Switch 2. It wasn't a bad bad direct it was just it was just remasters and things coming out later in 2024 and random shit so what and all that sort of stuff so i mean it felt like they were cleaning house before the 2020 or before the switch 2 and then this yeah. comes out and they've already delayed it to 2025 and it's just more of the same it's cleaning house no before this is the not switch more of the same it this pretty is, this much is an is. incredible direct no because my point is by your theory they were holding the good stuff for the Switch 2 and for the Switch 2 Direct, etc. There's a shitload of good stuff in this Direct and no mention of the Switch 2. I'm not saying the Switch 2 doesn't exist. I'm just saying your shitty Direct theory does not hold water. No, I think it completely holds water. Metroid Prime 4 Beyond is definitely for the Switch 2, which is coming out in 2025. No, but it's a banger. Your whole point was they that it's the Directs like are shitty because they, they're, gonna, not they're, not gonna, they're not going to announce new stuff. They're not going to announce new stuff until the, the Switch 2 Direct. That was your whole point, and that's not what happened. Here. And that is exactly what happened. No, it's not. They didn't announce the Switch 2. This is a Switch Direct, and they announced a whole bunch of good shit. It's 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 average Nintendo games. No, no, all of no this is average way. Nintendo new, releases. A new Mario and Luigi, first in nine years. Metroid Prime Four, first time we've seen it in seven years. But that stuff Zelda that was going to happen anyway. A new Super Mario Party game. Those are all it's fucking exactly bangers. Exactly what was going to happen anyways. I think you got to realize that directs will ebb and wane regardless of hardware. There are good directs and there are bad directs and you can't read the tea leaves on those for hardware because Nintendo does not give a fuck. Remember when they announced the switch and it was just like a three minute rooftop video and everybody's like fucking cool. They don't give a shit. You'll buy it. They announced they announced the, it, the, they announced the quote unquote switch successor in a tw in a tweet which said, "Hey, we're not going to talk about the switch successor yet." Like they don't give a shit how they announce stuff. You can't read the tea leaves in directs. Doesn't work that way with Nintendo. Um, I am between the both of you 
Uh, I don't think I think it was a perfectly fine direct. Um, I tried to I tried to find the GIF, but I couldn't. Um, people were sending the meme that's just like it's the Mario Party minigame where you're all in the snowballs. You have to try not to roll off. And it yeah. was uh, EA, Nintendo, Sony and Microsoft. And Nintendo stays completely still and everyone else just fucks up and falls off instantly. <laughs> um, and then it goes Mario wins. Um, it's that it's like Nintendo consistently just do their own thing and just keep on yep. the course and they win because they're not lighting their assholes on fire and they do consistently release video games microsoft yep. uh, <laughs> this is one weird trick microsoft hates it um and that's all it takes it's all it takes to win the console wars and, and quality wars. quality video games they don't have to all oh, be yeah, 10 yeah. out of tens but they just need to average at like an eight out of 10 and hit the fan base what the fan base wants. That's all they Fuck, need to you do. You can average at a seven out of 10 if you got nostalgia in your back pocket. No Mario yeah. and fucking Luigi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's the, this Nintendo Direct. Great way to close out E3 to see them come out with some bangers because Microsoft's press conference was pretty good. But the fact that that was the best of the show means the show overall for E3 2024 yeah. was not that good. Not not a lot of bangers. Not Microsoft's a lot of surprises. still riding the problem of they there's not a lot out, and we need fucking video games. You're a video game company. Yeah, yeah. Or it was a lot of known quantities company, for you know them. What I mean? Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's hit the sad news real quick because it's worth talking about. Uh the developer of the Alone in the Dark reboot, Pieces Interactive, has been shut down by Embracer. Uh, this was after the uh. The lackluster release of the Alone in the Dark uh, reboot. Uh, yeah. And then also we have Life by You by Paradox Tectonic has been canceled before release. And also the studio has been closed. That brings the total layoffs for 2024 in the games industry to 10,800. Again, surpassing the total number for 2023. Life by You being canceled is crazy because that game had so much ground all online. People wanted that thing so badly as a Sims competitor. I I'm not disagreeing with you. I just had no fucking clue what that game was until it got canceled. <laughs> you don't. I'll say it. You don't follow enough white women on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm OK with that. I'm OK with that. Um, yeah, people were people were very excited for that game, which makes me kind of shocked that it's I mean, I think something will come out. But yeah, I I was talking about this someone with uh, someone recently. It's like they don't want to close these studios, but man, it feels like they fucking want to close these studios. It, it feels like particularly Embracer buys them just to kill them. I know that's not the case. I know they think they think they have a good idea and it doesn't work out. No. But like it just feels so shit. I think they're treating them like like their venture capitalist fund where venture capitalist. And, you know, think about Shark Tank mentality, right? Oh. You got the money you can put you can you can put money into 100 companies. And as long as one or two of them hit it big, you're happy. Right. What do you do with the 98 others? Fuck off. That's yeah. what you do. Yeah. You have no intention of keeping these studios. You have no intention of nurturing them into successful studios that make a profit. You are essentially taking 100 risks and the ones that pay off. Good for you. The ones that don't you get rid of. And that's just a terrible way to run a portfolio of studios. And like. It's a terrible way to run, you know, your stock portfolio as well. But like that, at least stocks are fake money. This is yeah. like real people's jobs and a real video game that's going to come out, which makes it just like evil, like extra evil capitalist. Where it's like, do I really care if someone invests in BP? No, I don't fucking give a shit because it's not real. But like, or crypto. But like, this is yeah. like, this is actually real, unfortunately. Yeah, real money. Um, yeah, it sucks. Um, that's it for the news because we're fucking 20 minutes uh, over. Excuse me, you have missed out. I'm sorry, I have to mention this despite the uh, my lawyer protesting. Um, the fact that there's proof of life on Beyond Good and Evil 2, which Ian didn't find interesting at all, Chris found interesting like a normal human being. Um, they are releasing that I Beyond Good and Evil 20, 20 anniversary edition, uh, is... which comes with the uh. Uh, little thing here is in there. Is this proof of life, though? Yeah, they haven't read, talked read the about it in like they six the years. That it's gonna tie in. There'll be an exclusive mission revealing a narrative link to Beyond Good and Evil Two, a game that doesn't have a director, <laughs> as far as we know. <laughs> That's crazy. Know, just, in, in my head, I think of it. I think of it as the Sam Raimi Doctor Strange situation, 
where when he started making that movie, they were like, oh, hey, by the way, here's how WandaVision ends. And then he had no other contact with WandaVision and he just had to incorporate that somehow. And in my head, that's what happened here, too, is at some point in the past, they were like, oh, by the way, Beyond Good and Evil 2 has this plot point. You need to, to tie into that somehow. So what it's if, like not proof of life on the project. It just means at some point somebody said you need to do this. Oh, what, if in, what if in the bonus mission it cuts to an executive canceling Beyond Good and Evil 2? <laughs> I hope so. God, yes. Like, I, it could easily be like, oh, this game's canceled. Yeah, sure. This is leftover content or crazy stuff stuff like that it's just amazing yeah. that they're even calling it out in this thing or putting they're it in the game like it. it's something added to this game they could have easily taken it out and also not have called it out in this in this thing but it's just like <laughs> but i like, feel like they could have done it just ubisoft to get this press cancel pop. games though but like ubisoft like the shit they put out they don't and know when they did that, yes, we're we're aware <laughs> but but remember when they did that whole thing where they were like hey we're gonna delay far cry 6 we're, we're delaying Watch Dogs Legion. We're delaying all these games because we care about quality. And they delayed those games for six to nine months. And then they came out and they were still shit. Like, oh, yeah. I feel like, I feel like for Legion me, funny. I don't, I don't see Ubisoft canceling Beyond Good and Evil 2 because they do not have a track record of canceling things because of quality. They just pu fucking put it out there anyways. You know what I mean? Oh, So for totally. me, it's like, oh, it's, uh, sure, it's still out there. Something's going to come out. It's going to be real fucking disappointing. Yeah. You know? It's just wild. Like they West haven't Assassin's talked about Creed it. Mirage was good. I, I, yeah, I would wouldn't yeah, be surprised if the last franchise. if the last time they mentioned it was like four or five yeah. years ago. I, I uh, do agree. It's it's wild. It's wild that that in E three season this is how it gets mentioned. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. yeah. Also, I, I also agree with your points <laughs> for sure. But it's just maybe, maybe weird they're to just call testing, it out. they're just testing the waters to see if that drives sales for this fucking re remaster. And if so, then they can be like, okay, people actually do somewhat care about this this yeah. franchise. Maybe we should give the game a director. Yeah. So don't don't buy the remaster, even if you love the franchise, because that just gives them an excuse to ruin the sequel. I can hear David buying eight copies all the way across the country. <laughs> I also really like that Wario 64 wrote, despite them saying it, uh, saying out on all platforms, it is not coming to the Ouya. <laughs> <laughs> Remember all point. the Ouya fans we ran into in Iceland? Oh, Wario 64 weird. cracks a joke in a, in a release thing. It's always a banger. <laughs> yeah. That guy's crazy. Uh, moving on to the uh, wishlist spotlight. Uh, I've been skipping it for Wait, a couple no, weeks. There was, there was news. There oh, was more yeah. News. Sorry. Uh, there's some sort of acclaimed game stream tabletop RGB rumored to be returning. That's right, folks. Uh, we will be bringing back tabletop. No, what is it, Chris? What do you want to talk about? Oh, that was it. I just, I just thought it'd be funny to do that. And then you attach the link that doesn't go anywhere. Oh, fuck. Save data's yeah. here. We got to get out of here. Oh, my God. <laughs> we we gotta gotta literally have to leave. Uh, we're surrounded, a, we're by, surrounded perverts. by perverts. Right? How do you get away with that name on Twitch? I'm going to ban you and report that name. <laughs> That's no, I'm my mod real quick. Oh, <laughs> I, didn't I, I didn't realize those from about perverts that chatted. I thought you were just calling the Save Data uh, fans perverts. Oh, I didn't I realize that disagree. either. I was just calling them. Um, I want to wish the spotlight uh, PVKK, which is Planet 10 Vertidgung Skagnek Commandant. Um, this is a game uh, in up. which you uh, control a giant artillery battery in space. Oh, this looks fucking and sick. And I guess fire it at things. <gasps> There's FMV um, too. I know, that's what I'm seeing, Ian. PVKK on uh, Steam. You can Google it. Uh, it is uh, presented by Games Baked in Germany, which I guess is a thing, a <laughs> showcase that is going on right now. Uh, which is <laughs> No, not just a terrible no, phrase. No, that's a terrible name. No, that's one. No, they should have thought about that better. Two. Um, no, that, it's right. <laughs> games, games baked in Germany is no. just this name of this thing that Steam is doing. So it's Steam's fault. Um, the name of the publisher and developer is, <laughs> is Bippin Bits. I'm just, get, I'm, I'm just gunning through. The uh, name of the developer is Bippin Bits, um, which is a good name. Um, this game does have FMV and looks great. Um, also, I think, I think this is inspired by, um, uh, Chris, how are you holding it together? It's so fucked. What's that? It's, it's, it's that, it's, is it Studio Ghibli? That collection of, like, short animated films? The one with the big gun. Know, Memories? Is that what it's called? We can bake a lot of bread. Gundam. <laughs> 
Oh, oh my god. So much bread. I tried hard to get through that whole bit. Jeez. I was literally weeping. Oh, um, thank you, Chris, for getting yeah, through that. <laughs> it uh, is by Pippin Bits. It genuinely yeah, looks really um, cool. I saw it about an hour. Uh, Katsuhiro Otomo, who's the Akira guy. Um, oh, I think I think this is inspired by that because one of the one of the main like memories, one of the the short films is you uh, as a dude who lives in a place and they shoot the big gun every day. Yes. Okay. Memories. Yeah. He also did. I posted in the the Discord a while ago. Is the short about the F Zero racer who like is just going around and around. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like goes faster than the speed of light. Yeah. That guy's great. I watched uh, Midnight Goku Eye, which features a villain lady who has like peacock feathers and like stuns guys, and it's really good. What? I downloaded bad, weird, uh, not bad, weird eighties anime, and I've just been watching them slowly. Speaking uh, of, um, stink, stink bomb. The guy farts really bad. <laughs> Kills everyone. Uh, anyways, that's the game on Steam. Go wishes to that. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, anime update. Will anime update? What? Um, Disney Plus uh, combined with Hulu. Um, and now there's crazy shit on Disney Plus, including an anime section. Uh, I started watching One Punch Man. Uh, ah. show's pretty good. I, I wasn't that, we made it like seven or eight episodes in, and I wasn't that into it, but I, I can't tell if it was me or the show. I couldn't tell. I just, the nonchalance of Saitama is just incredibly yeah, so funny good. to me. Uh, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a well-structured show. Uh, it does that really annoying thing where they're like just getting into the story and the episode ends and you're like, what? Um, it, so, from but what I, I think I haven't watched seen a lot of the it, scene, I, uh, it, it, I just uh -huh. want to say, seen the scene, it's funny and good and well written, mm -hmm. but I don't think the overarching sort of thing is some incredible story they're telling, you know? I that's think like, it gets better because remember, it, star it started as a gag. Like, it started as yeah. a, like, a gag of like, I'm going to write like a like eight panel at a time manga, and that's the whole joke. But then people started liking it. So I went, oh, fuck, shit, I got to do my it's, actual job. It's yeah. really funny, and I like that stuff. And just like, that time when he he just had the dream of like being successful and then he just like woke up it's like oh damn it uh it's really good um i am uh i'm weird with anime uh i still need to finish initial yeah. d and i need to watch that evangelion movie um and you oh, know attack on titans on the list i was looking at it to watch which 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 evangelion are you talking about end of evangelion or the once twice thrice twice no not remakes. the remasters the remakes um, I watched the show run, the original show run, and then I need to watch the two movies, End of Evangelion and the other one. I, th I think, I think the one other of one a you recap don't need movie. to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you can I think skip I just the recap. Need to watch. Yeah, I think because right. I'm at the point where I need to, I need to, I watch the show. I need to watch End of Evangelion. Oh, we should watch the movie that. together. That, that's that's all you have to watch. I always watch the yeah. show and, and and End of Evangelion. You're good. But I will say, no, I want to watch the new ones. The new ones, are yeah, good. the remakes. I've watched one or two of them. Yeah, but like if you want like the core experience, oh, the story, you, yeah, it's all uh, oh, that's yeah. all the required viewing. Beyond that, it's whatever you want to do. Um, yeah. I'm saving those because Karen said she would watch those because we've seen clips of them. And then also, she comes up the other day, and I was like halfway through an episode of One Punch Man. She's like, "Oh, one, what, what happened?" She's like, "I was like, oh, I thought I could just watch it without." You. And she's like, "Yeah, but you, you have to at least tell me what's happening." And I was like, "Damn it!" I keep finding he, shows, he and then it's like. Man. I Wanda. have to wait for Karen to come home to watch them now because she you should, you should she watch. doesn't sit down yeah. to watch them. She sits down to play Paper Mario or be on her phone and watch them. And I'm like, gotcha, okay, gotcha. Fine. Um, yeah, yeah. So. so the the two that really worked for Maggie and I was Attack on Titan, which fucking lives up to the hype. It is very good. And uh, we're going through My Hero Academia. We're on season four right now, oh. and that's that's just a, that's just a banger. That's just a let's sit down, watch some eps. Every eps a banger. We got great characters, and it's just a straight fucking anime. It's yeah. great. Uh, Initial Hatred D anime was not, great too. Like what, I, what I watched it, I liked. Sorry, what'd you say, Chris? Hatred of anime aside, I actually did like what I watched My Hero. I watched like the first season when that was out, and then never kind of went. I that's yeah, despise Attack on Titan. I understand that people like it. I just it. Something about it, I just the plot device of that person's a titan really just fucking pisses me off. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Because the I way like the it. way they start, it's it feels like the opposite of J.J. Abrams' fucking mystery box, where he's like, "There's a mystery. I'm never gonna solve it, and then maybe I will, and it's not gonna pay off." Attack on Titan is just like, 
fucking layers and layers of mysteries and as they slowly peel them back they're just more and more satisfying and you're like holy fuck and it's it's Ooh. i don't know how they i don't know how they made it pay off so well but but they did when they could have easily fucked it up that excites me um I, I did start a while ago and i think i'll restart it was vinland saga uh and uh, the like six or seven episodes i watched on a flight were really good they're well animated mm -hmm. uh, it was also like way gorier than it but like adult gorier than i thought it would be uh and it was a pretty good story um but i i need to, we, need to you know what we should that. watch for extra life we should watch ghost, ghost stories, stories i believe is what it's called <laughs> i have it i have I it i've seen clips of it and it looks the, basically <laughs> the premise like a black is that chasing you <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically the premise is they had this anime they shipped it off to america they gave them no they gave them no direction on how to do Ooh. the voice acting so yeah, it's just a bunch yeah, of yeah, american yeah, yeah. voice actors who are just like making <clears throat> shit up the whole time to get as crazy as possible it's like and so it's all these little kids saying weird things and I, it's I, it, I it looks very it and funny then, and we, every time I Google it, it was like, it was always people asking, I wasn't Googling oh if it was funny, but there were always like threads of like, is it funny? Is it funny? Like, is the dub funny? And it was all like, uh, basically, if you are our age demographic, it is funny because it is like cringy, slightly stereotypical racist jokes of like 2008, 2010. Uh, which will be yeah. funny to us, but not to other people. And uh, yeah. when I saw that clip too, Karen sent me a reel that was like, watch this anime dub. And uh, it was that one. And it was that scene where he yelled, he yelled I, that because the kid seen, was running. I've seen clips of this. Um, and this did remind me of an idea I had in college, um, which was get someone that doesn't watch anime or doesn't care about anime, uh, get a like relatively niche but still well known ish anime, and then give that person the description of each episode, and yeah. they have to create a show like they have to shoot like a short film style show that is that thing, and you only give them one episode at a time. So like you know <laughs> episode one the, a the alien kills this guy, and then episode two it's like the alien does this thing, and they have to like they have to continue their continuity with only like the scraps. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that'd be a really cool experiment. I think it also would be a good thing to do with like a comedy show. That's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Um. Anyways, uh, that's my anime journey. So uh, enjoy the anime update. Uh. Yeah, I did start One Piece as well a while ago, but I I didn't keep watching that. That's when the that live has like a thousand out. episodes. I know, right? but the first it's season is it's like its own much. arc, and it was like sixty episodes, and I legit watched about four or five of them, and I they were genuinely pretty well well written and done. So I was like, yeah, I'm sure it's good. I just yeah. I can't, I cannot fucking thousand episodes. I can't. No, 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 no. I was like, you because Karen said that stay. too, and I was like. I could do 60 episodes one season, and then after that, if I really liked the show, I would do the, like, these are the episodes you need to watch. Reach out to reach out to Elise. She'll give you the one pace, which is, like, Ocean Cut for Nardo. It cuts out all the fat. Oh. Um, it reduces the, the time by about half. Um, which you need, is, like, a Kai remake. Yeah. yeah. As someone yeah. that has uh, watched all of One Piece, it's the only anime I keep up with. Um, it's exceptional. The storytelling is great. It's genuinely impressive what Oda had, has done across 25 years now. Um, please, for the love of God, let it end. Yeah. Yeah. It's. But it's, we're, we're, we're in payoff season. So, like, if it's a good time to get in. It's a good time to get in. Yeah, let me catch up. Um, that's going to be <laughs> it, folks. Let me hit the outro button. We can get outro here. Uh, 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 folks, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Uh, that is a picture of Pi right next to me. And speaking of Pi, Chris was here from Save Data. He loves pies. Uh, he was hanging out. You can go find him at Save Data Team. Uh, don't you go to his Twitter, find me on Twitter. Uh, unless you want crypto. Uh, then go find him on Twitter. Uh, so go <laughs> check out their streams and their cool stuff. Uh, Ian Gibson was here at Think Gibson on the Twitters and all the sorts of things. Go check him out. I have been your host, Will Crosby, at Hunt270. Subpixel uh, team, subpixelfilms.com will bring you to our link tree. You can come join our Discord. You can go buy merch. You can get all sorts of cool things. Uh, we will be back next Tuesday, I believe, with more Fired Emblem. Uh, slowly coming up on the end of that game, thankfully. Slowly as ever. Trying to get through two missions per episode, but we'll get there. As always, we'll be back next week. Thanks so much for watching. See you later.